Hey folks, looking at the Steam hardware survey to kind of get a quick snapshot of the PC gaming landscape, one thing is overwhelmingly clear. There's a certain type of card which absolutely dominates this chart. Nvidia leads the way, and it's cards at the lower end of the stack, which makes up around 40% of the user base. Even cards which were not really the best value, I'm looking at you 1050 Ti, they're undeniably hugely popular and the likes of the 1050 Ti, the 1050 and even the GTX 1650 makes up over 15% of the PC user base alone, at least on Steam. If we think about the latest RTX 3000 generation of cards, one thing is absent though, and that is a 50 class card. Even before the legendary GTX 750 Ti was on the scene, cards from this 50 class have generally been categorised by reasonable prices and often with no external power connectors required, meaning you could simply slot them into the most mundane OEM system and turn it into a capable entry level gaming machine. And if we look at the past 50 series cards in comparison to their 60 class big brothers, we can kind of see that Every single one of them since the legendary 750Ti has offered up between 65% and 80% of the performance of their higher 60 class brothers. Now back onto Ampere, while you can get a GPU which is called the RTX 3050Ti in laptops, it's looking less likely that a GA107 and 4GB combo would be very competitive on the desktop side. So as of quarter 4 2021, there's no 50 class card in Nvidia's lineup to be seen. That however doesn't mean that Nvidia doesn't have a PCIe powered 70 watt card which could cut the mustard at the low end of the market. So let me introduce you to this, the RTX A2000. Now this is the real 3050 Ti that Nvidia just won't give you, but you should really want. Now a lot has been said about how inefficient power wise the RTX 3000 lineup is in comparison to AMD's Navi 2 based GPUs and that is true on the face of it. To compete, Nvidia has had to push the clock speeds well past their sweet spot to remain competitive. That doesn't mean that the Ampere architecture as a whole though needs to be a power hog, if you're willing to keep the clock speeds within that sweet spot. This little 70 watt card doesn't even use Nvidia's GA107, the 107 GPUs generally being used in smaller 50 class cards. Instead, it opts for the 276mm squared GA106 GPU as is found in the full fat RTX 3060. And it features 26 out of the total 30 SMs being active, which gives us a total of 3,328 shading units. We've got 104 TMUs, 104 tensor cores, and 26 second generation ray tracing accelerator cores, a cut back ever so slightly on the spec of the 3060, which has 28 out of the total 30 SMs active. Now unlike the 3060, Nvidia has paired 6GB of 12GB per second GDDR6 memory, and like cards such as the 6700 XT from AMD and the RTX 3060, it uses the 192-bit memory interface, but with lower clock speeds to keep the power down. This still results in 288GB per second memory bandwidth at stock though, which is more bandwidth than the old GTX 1070 Ti, and the same memory bandwidth as we got on the GTX 1660 Ti. In game, the A2000 sneaks into the 70W envelope by lowering GPU clocks. It's got an advertised boost clock of 1200MHz, but it does seem to average anywhere from in between 1300 to 1500 MHz depending on the game, which is compared to about 2 GHz on the full fat 3060. Now, no other card from either Nvidia's GeForce line or AMD's RX line fits into this bracket, and that makes the A2000 a really exciting prospect. So let's put it up against the 3060 and the 6600 XT to see where this configuration would sit if Nvidia did pull the trigger on a cut down GA106 based 3050 Ti or 3050 Super. And for these tests I'm going to use a more budget orientated test rig and all these tests are going to be run at 1080p today which is generally the level that a 50 series guard would be gunning for. So we'll start things off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and unsurprisingly the 6600 XT it blitzes ahead of both the 3060 and the A2000. 
It should be noted though that the gap between the 3060 and the A2000 is actually much less than the gap between the 3060 and the 6600, so despite the lower clock speeds, the A2000 still has some pretty powerful chops. Now on to Far Cry 6 on the Ultra preset with ray tracing turned off. And unsurprisingly, the A2000 does come at the bottom of the stack here, but once again, it's really close to both the 3060 and the 6600 XT, with the averages being well above 60fps. Jumping onto Horizon Zero Dawn again, it's a similar story. The 6600 XT takes the win, with the 3060 not too far behind and the A2000 a little bit behind that. Again though, everything is above 60fps here with even the 1% lows on the A2000 being comfortably above 60fps. Now finally we'll jump into Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so an older kind of title here but one that's still worth playing, and once again the A2000 returns really respectable results here, coming in at almost 90fps with its average frame rate, with the 1% lows being above 70. A great showing here and a totally comfortable 1080p ultra gaming experience, no compromises at all. So if we take the averages for all these results here, and take everything else into consideration, we can see that the 70 watt A2000 manages to provide roughly 4 fifths or 80% of the performance of a full fat RTX 3060, which is pretty astounding for a 70 watt half height GPU, and is exactly the type of performance envelope you would hope that something like the RTX 3050 Ti or Super would fall into. In fact, with performance figures like this, it's safe to say that if this card was given a 50 series tag and released, it would be one of the highest performing 50 series cards relative to their 60 class counterparts since the Maxwell generation and the GTX 950, which in all honesty is pretty awesome. The A2000 is a supremely competent skew of the GA106 GPU. No, it's not bringing anything that we haven't seen before in terms of performance, with it roughly falling in between something like a 1660 Ti and an RTX 2060, but the fact that it can match or compete with these cards while not even fully utilising the power available through a single PCIe slot is really impressive. And that's before we even touch on the feature set. Unlike the smaller GTX 1650 class cards from the Turin range, the A2000 has all of its RTX features enabled. That means DLSS and ray tracing is on the table. Now, RT performance is comparatively good to its rasterization performance, offering up levels similar to what we've seen before on the RTX 2060. More than playable, and a great entry point into ray tracing. Now, being able to use DLSS is another great win for cards in this performance segment. The A2000 has enough grunt to play games comfortably at 1080p, max settings at above 60fps, but having the option to get a few extra frames out of the card using DLSS, especially on its quality mode, which is a very minimal hit to the image quality, is a great option to have on a 50 class card. So I think I've probably reached the point now where I can heartily say that the RTX A2000 is a super interesting card, and it's a card that Nvidia absolutely should release to gamers, as if it was branded the new 3050 Ti, it would be an absolute stormer. A brilliant return to form for the 50 class cards in the vein of something like the 750 Ti. So it kind of makes me really sad when I can honestly say that Nvidia likely won't be releasing this to gamers anytime soon. At the moment, they can sell an A2000 as a workstation card for between 450 and 500 quid, and it will get snapped up almost immediately. It's a compelling card for CAD or 3D workstations, especially if you want to keep the footprint down. It is compelling for gamers, as we've seen with these results. But unfortunately, it's also compelling for miners. You see, since this card is not a GeForce card, Nvidia has opted not to limit the hash rate. This unfortunately means that the RTX A2000 also happens to be one of the best mining cards out there, with an Ethereum hash rate of around 41 mega hashes per second at well under 70 watts once tuned. For reference, an RX 6700 XT will mine at the same hash rate and draw over 110 watts and something like the RX 6600 XT, it's only got a return a hash rate of around 30 mega hashes per second for a kind of similar power draw. So it's not only workstations that these cards are getting snapped up for. 
Now I'm sure Nvidia will eventually release GA107 on the desktop and that card will likely have the 3050 branding in some form, but it's just going to be a bit of a shame when we now all know that they had a brilliant GA106 based card just waiting in the wings. So on that downer of a note, I'm going to leave it there for today. But I will be playing with this A2000 much more as it's going into my main PC to replace my RX 6800 as I really want to see how far we can push it and how it holds up as a 1440p workhorse. But for now, I'm just going to say thank you very much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below and in the next video.